This shower leaves a lot to be desired. This is one of those uh, rare exceptions, not exception to the rule. I get called in on a lot of bad, bad shower jobs. This is, um, this is different. And I like different only because some of this stuff is educational for people who don't, who are not aware of certain things. Um, it was only a couple weeks ago that I got called by somebody in another state wanted me to potentially come out and tile over their fiberglass shower, which I declined to do because it really can't be done. And for a lot of reasons, I had to explain to him uh, what the reasons were. And, you know, he needs to build a new shower. He can't just put tile on top of stuff. But they did here. So what this was, originally, and it still is, is a fiberglass shower pan, which, in my experience, almost always go bad. I don't know, 50-50 shot, I suppose. There are a lot of shower pans that will last that are fiberglass, but I've taken out quite a few of them that when this happens, and usually the weak spot is around the drain, you get a crack in it, and you're done. So they have uh, leaking going on downstairs from this cracked shower pan, and if you're not familiar with Red Guard, it's a topical membrane that we usually waterproof the wall with. Um, they put Red Guard on top of this, and the reason that this shower pan is yellow is because this is a residual uh, leftover of what the Red Guard, when it started peeling off, Red Guard um, needs to be kind of on a porous surface to actually do its job, and of course, this isn't porous, and that's why it started coming off. But it was a great idea to save some time. It was kind of a band-aid type of thing. Um, there was originally red guard everywhere you see yellow, and the residual of the red guard is is what caused this to yellow up. This is original. Um, there's a lot of mold and mildew on here, and the reason is this is slightly sloped. When I've seen these shower pans before, they're slightly sloped in. Why? I don't know, but they are. And so water gets back there and it has nowhere to go and it creates mold and mildew and it kind of perpetuates. So there's no way to get rid of it except to, you know, take things out and start over again. In this case, it has to be done because this is cracked and anything you do going further will not solve the problem. Um, but that's not the bigger issue, although that's a big issue. The bigger issue is that they tiled over, and this isn't fiberglass. This construction is, if you can see this, this is cultured marble. So the whole makeup of this bathroom, from the tub all the way to the shower, is cultured marble. Cultured marble on, on the step up, and the whole tub is cultured marble. Uh, I've taken these out before. You just bust them up into, into big chunks, and it's quite heavy. Uh, this is what they did back in the 80s, a lot of. And the problem, the biggest problem that they ran into is that they were trying to save some money by not taking out. These are... The biggest problem with these is that they're, they're one complete sheet of cultured marble. So you're seeing one sheet that goes all the way back wall, and then this other sheet where the shower head is at. That's one total sheet. So what they would have had, and because it's glued to the sheetrock and back, back of it, what they would have had to do is cut out this entire thing, you know, same as you would if it was a tile shower, and just bust all of that cultured marble off of the wall along. It's a lot of work basically is what I'm getting at. So rather than doing a lot of work, <laughs> they spent a little time, although probably more than they needed to, setting this tile on top of the culture of marble, which is a little bizarre. I haven't run into that before. This this glass was original from the 80s and that's where they went up to. There's no way to get this uh, this frame glass off. All this spline would have to be taken out off of both the front and the back of all these panels and everything. It's very problematic. Is it possible? Yes, but it's a lot, a lot, a lot of pain, which I would never put anyone through, and I wouldn't go through it either. I don't put in... Once these panels are taken apart, they're basically useless. So they decided to just tile up to there and stop. And then, of course, the tiling job is horrible. Um, this wall is... I don't even know if you can see it on camera. This wall is bowed out. Um, and I have seen this cultured marble kind of bow before through its own weight and because sometimes the sheetrock isn't appropriately set and so it follows the lead of the sheetrock. But this, um, this wall is definitely bowed. 
and because it's bowed and because they set the tile directly to this culture marble, same as they would if they didn't know any better setting tile to any surface, you never stick tile straight to the surface. You always trowel down your thin set, trowel out your thin set back butter onto your tile, and then put it on there so that you have a little bit of manipulation. I've said that in other videos before, but apparently this guy didn't watch my videos. And here is the bowing effect again. I don't know if you can see it in here. Um, but it's obviously bowed this direction and then it goes back in again pretty profoundly. Um, this there, and so what happens, not to, I got myself off track of my thought, so what happens when you set the tile directly to any wall surface, including here, is you end up with a lot of lippage. There's lippage here everywhere I look um, because they set it straight to there and then they have this huge grout line that's almost nothing down there and then increasingly gets larger and larger until you're about, uh, even though there's separation between the walls, it's still about a quarter of an inch, if not three eighths of an inch or larger than that. Um, so it's just a slop job. It's, and nothing lines up. These tiles don't line up. These tiles don't line. Oh, another thing too. This is a cheaper end tile and the reason these grout lines are large is because when you buy tile that's you know, 80 cents, 75 cents a square foot, you're getting tile that lines up perfectly on one end, but never lines up on the other end. There's a discrepancy here of about an eighth of an inch, and that's just the nature of the beast. So they use a larger grout line to compensate, but you know, their tile is still off. It's just a horrible tile job. And this bench had the cultured marble on the face, which it does still, and it had it on the top, and then they just tiled right over that. Uh, so, Kind of weird. Um, it makes no sense to all the work, all the work that was put into this could have just as easily. Look, they tried to make a cut around here, <laughs> but they're out too far. Um, the, the, the work and angst that they went through to make this happen, they could have easily added just a little bit more uh, manual labor and done it right, but you know, it is what it is. This is interesting. Um, kind of seeing this for the first time too. So they came in here to whatever, I don't know the reason. This step never got tiled, same culture of marble, but that one did. And down at the end, they didn't really know what to do. So they just use a whole bunch of caulking and then grout to uh, make up the difference. I think this is quarter inch backer board that they stuck to the culture of marble and then tiled on top of that so that all the tile is flush here, but it's not over here. There's, there's a good part of an inch, which this inch is taken up now, and uh, I don't know, I have no explanation. Here's the odd thing. Whoever did this tile did not do that tile, almost guaranteed, because this is, except for the top here, I wouldn't have grouted the top. Um, it's, it's not a bad job. You know, they started here, so if they get this corner piece just so, it's all perfect lined up. It looks level to me, to my eye, and all the cuts, all the diagonal cuts, are right on point with the bottom and the top. There's, there's really no discrepancy. There's not even any lippage on here, except for a little bump out here. But uh, I, I don't know why this was done so well. I don't know why this was done at all. And then this is just really, really bad. So again, uh, this is a lot of information I put out for no other reason than to help you along if you're deciding to ever, ever tile over a shower that's already has some type of subsurface, whether it be tile, whether it be this culture of marble, whatever it is, don't tile over tile, especially in a shower. Um, these fiberglass pans are builder's grade. Um, I've had people want to put those in and I refuse to put them in because these are the problems that I always see happen. Um, can you use Red Guard as a fix? Can you use caulking as a fix? Yeah, but that's always a band-aid. You know, eventually you're going to have to take all this stuff out and that's, that's what needs to be done here. It's a shame really too because like I said, for the, for the time and effort they spent to kind of rig this up, the way it was, as they call in the trade, kind of a hack job. Uh, they really could have gone 
a little step further and done it right. The problem and the biggest issue I think they ran into is when they got a price to replace all this glass, they said, oh, no, 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 let's, let's go the cheap way, and that's what they did. So for whatever reason they did it this way, it is what it is, and it, it's going to come out. Um, but, you know, hope you extrapolated something out of this, uh, all this diatribe. You know, I tend to talk a lot, so if you got something out of the video, great. If you didn't, sorry I had to put you through all my suffering of, of listening. What a wonderful world